Hello, welcome to Script Tonight Reacts. I'm Script Tonight. Today we're going to be watching season one, episode five of The Haunting of Blind Manor. This episode is called The Altar of the Dead. Well, that doesn't sound great. So last episode was absolutely fantastic. I completely, hand on heart, fell in love with this show. Last episode. I really started to get gripped in episode three, but this, the fourth episode, I'm like, I'm in love with it. All I can, th I have been thinking about almost nothing else, actually, since I watched that last episode. Um, and like the music's all going through my head. I keep going, na, 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 na. Um, but yeah, I had a, I kind of had a couple of thoughts. It was really interesting to see the role that Flora has over you know where her her overseeing of the movements of the spirits that haunt Bly Manor fascinating and her and Miles seemingly really stepping up and doing a solid for Danny that last episode and making sure that she didn't cross paths with the lady in the lake the lady in the lake who I'm, who I'm for now guessing is Viola Lloyd. Um, the name that Flora etched um, from the from this gravestone inside the chapel. That's my working theory at the moment is that that is Viola Lloyd. And I'm really hoping at some point we get a flashback to, to find out who is the lady in the lake. Um, and I will say now, if... If, if it is Viola Lloyd, and if it is played by Kate Wassertrops, who was Theo last time round, I'm going to be fucking ecstatic. That's all I'm saying. I have no idea what's going to happen, but that's my dream. Also, really kind of bonding in with these characters now. I'm really shipping Danny and Jamie. I love that they've given us another another lesbian woman storyline this season every every time please that's fine by me loved it it was gorgeous and very true to you know the circumstances of the day um i'm also really shipping um <laughs> owen and hannah too mrs gross i i think they'd be great for each other oh my sweet summer child i don't know if that's gonna happen or not but it looks to me like there's an incredible fondness between them that could form the basis of, of you know, a marriage, basically. But I still don't know what happened to Hannah's husband. I don't understand why she was looking down that well. Back earlier in the, in, I think, episode one, when Danny arrived, she was transfixed in that well. And we've seen her have multiple sort of disappearance mental disappearances since then she's also seeing cracks form in the sort of upper walls of different places first the kitchen then the chapel and they don't appear to be visible to anyone else and the second one even disappeared for her when she went back to it and she does seem to have an awareness of what's going on in the house because she's told you know when Danny was putting out the hide and seek game. She was all about getting to bed. And she's also said she hasn't been sleeping. And given Miles's Peter's puppet conversation, um, I'm led to believe that Peter is attempting to gather control of everyone. And he's pulling on their strings, and he could, he could be. That could be what's happening to Hannah. Um, we know that he does. He really doesn't like her because she really did see through his bullshit. She was not. She was not having his narcissism at all. Like she was not there for it. She didn't pity him. She didn't, um, you know, fawn over him. She just cut straight. She just saw straight through him, and he hated it. So I figure she's going to bear the brunt of his anger about this whole situation. He's trapped in this little boy's body, doesn't want to be in. 
Um, I also find it really interesting. I don't know if you've noticed, but when Miles becomes Peter, he puts his little hand in his pocket, like his, <laughs> like Peter does, like his whole posture changes. Nice touch. Yeah, just absolutely gripped by where this is going to go. I also haven't forgotten back in episode two when we had the story about the demons entering the pigs and that essentially they had to have permission. And I'm wondering what constitutes that permission. I feel like Miles may be getting the lighter somehow created a bond which meant that Peter can access him and I'm just worried about kind of who else I want to understand more I know I'm going to get told it in the end but I am I'm really excited to find that stuff out what's really interesting is that we don't even know that Peter is dead aside from he appears to be a ghost at the moment and not a real live person not only because of the way in which he's appearing outside the house but also the way that miles appears to be getting taken over and then not actually being able to recall what he'd done while he was taken over so there's a whole story there about you know what's actually happened to peter quint because he took off with £200,000 and it appears it did not end well for him. So, what's going on now? So much, so much. I could I could keep going, but I'll just be talking forever. So, th- but those are like my main thoughts at the moment. And I'm just hella excited for this episode. Oh, right. Oh, so without further ado, let's have it. The housekeeper knew, more than most, that deep experience was never peaceful. And because she knew this ever since she'd first called Bly home, she would always find her way back to peace within her daily routine. And it had always worked. Always. We can't count on the past. I mean, we, we think we have it trapped in our memories, but memories fade or they're wrong. Any of us could die at any moment. Think about it. We can't count on our future either. No past, no future. There's only this. Oh my God, it's scary, I know, but Owen. You're young. Like you have a past, you have a future. You know, I'd argue you can count on both. Oh, sweet trunk man. <sighs> Maybe I'll go back to Paris. Well, you, um... I mean, you... You could, couldn't you? You could... You could too. <laughs> <laughs> What would I do in Paris? Eat croissants and, and, and drink good wine. And live, Hannah. Live. Yes. You and me. Thanks. While we still can. Yeah, okay. Well, this is gonna hurt like a mother <sighs> Come on, Owen. Time to go home. About that oh, time. Oh, man, that was such an interruption. <sighs> It's all Edmund's fault. I'll call you later. <laughs> it's all good. I love that she let her know it was all good before she left and didn't go in touch him. See, that's the opposite of Peter Quint. Are you Hannah? <gasps> uh, oh, oh Jesus! Charmant. These transitions get me every fucking time. Sorry, I, I, I'm a little uh, discombobulated today. And typically, job interviews aren't my... Right, yes, well, I'm, I'm all set. What's going on? I'm, I'm looking at this as an opportunity to hone my skills. In, in Paris, I was a sous chef, which means they only let me chop vegetables. Here, I'm bringing <laughs> everything together myself. It'd be a, a great learning experience. 
This is my home, and I take great pride in it. We need a cook who intends to stay on for a while. Well, um, yesterday my, my mother thought it was 1962, and that I was my grandfather. And that's why I'm here. I need to make a living while I mind her, and but I won't go running off. <laughs> I, I promise you that. That's that's not who I am. It must be very difficult. That I'm learning a lot about being alive. <laughs> I mean, a lot. Mrs. Bess, they're here. The Wingraves. The Wingraves are here. Very good, thank you. Did what, her outfit just change? What took her there? Hello, Flora, darling. Mm. Ah. Lovely to be back. Oh, lovely to have you back, sir. Hello, Hannah. Lovely to see your face. And yours too, sir. <laughs> we'll have tea this week. You'll tell me all about how numbingly constant everything is. <laughs> well, I should like that very much, Mom. to get you? Yeah. Is he all right? He's just fine. Somehow, him and whoever she is there, it's just fine. Oh. oh, my. You can stay here, you know, for as long as you like. Forever, if you need to. Charlotte seems more like she's from the 1880s than the, uh, the 1980s. So she got right down. Whoa! Jeez. Uh oh. Peter, fuck off. Oi! Uh, Stop it! Ever do that again, do you hear me? No bullshit. I will fucking end you. <laughs> Try me. Dick. Look at you, all flushed. Oh, Peter. You're pretty when you blush. Piss off. Miles! I hate that prick. <gasps> any of us could die at any moment, or we could forget our entire lives, which is like dying. Our moments are supposed to be like... Chapters. Huh. Like confetti. <laughs> God. Oh, Jesus. She's just like going with it wherever she pops up. Uh, slow down or you'll break your bloody skulls. The last time I saw you, you were banging on about me having Owen's batter in my mouth. Oh, come on, I forgot all about that. Man. I don't even know who that was. Oh, yeah, of course you don't. You don't get to talk to me like that again. No, never, never. I, pr I promise. I do. Yeah, of course. Okay. Can I kiss you? <laughs> Dick. Oh, I hate him. I fucking hate him. Oops. Honestly, Hannah. Live a little. <clears throat> oh, God. The crack is actually growing. Scared me. What are you doing up here? Nicking stuff. 
You know, Charlotte Bunch told me that necklace is over 400 years old. It's probably worth thousands. Hmm. Henry might be too much of a mess to notice what you're up to, but I'm not. And what am I up to? Oh, you're taking things that aren't yours. There's them, and then there's us, Hannah. We're the help. I'll have the necklace, please. Here. Thank you. You should be nicer to me, Anna. I mean, one more for me, and you'd be thrown out of here with nothing but your last week's wages. This is my home, Peter Quint. You'll leave long before I do. I really want to punch him in the face. This is an opportunity to hone my skills. In Paris, I was a sous chef, which means they only let you chop vegetables. Haven't we already done this? Yes. But we have to do it again. Why? You tell me. What? It's OK. Let's get back to it. In Paris, I was a sous chef, which means they only let you cut vegetables. Here, I'll be putting everything together myself. It'll be a great learning experience. Oh, Miles is a good boy. Huh? Is he ever cruel? Little boys can be very cruel. Look, he sounds like Peter. He's a good boy and he would never do anything to... Hurt you? Is that what you were going to say? Miles Dominic Wingrave! What do you think you're doing? Jesus! Okay. Enjoying a fag on a nice sunny day. What oh. do you do? Oh. Cannot, under any circumstances, be smoking. Or do you want to die a horrible choking death, hmm? <laughs> oh, Hannah. <laughs> Honestly. Oh, no. oh, Miles! Jesus! Oh, that's for Sam. He may not be dead, but nobody's perfect, are they? <laughs> He's just going for a phase. And he'll be back. He will. Marriage is like religion in a way. How long can you actually believe in something without seeing it? I still love him. I used to be a daddy's girl. What? As far as he was concerned, my dreams were far out of my reach. And he felt I needed to be reminded of that constantly. What a dick. So when you find someone who truly sees you, who truly believes in you, sometimes more than you believe in yourself, or you hold on to them and you don't let go. You're not a narcissist, you don't, because they're even lying. Even if they're rough around the edges, even if they're not perfect, even if you lose yourself just a little, you don't have to lose yourself to find happiness, you know. Don't you, though? No. Nope. I've never met anyone like him. I know he's not perfect. More than that, though, isn't it? Forgive me for saying so, Rebecca, but... He scares the shit out of me. <laughs> he scares me, too. But in the best way. Being with him might be scary at times, but... And I've never felt so alive. You look like you haven't slept for a week. You worry too much, OK? I've been with men like him before. No. You told me yourself. You told me you never met anyone like him mm. before. And you don't get to have it both ways. Oh, Hannah, honestly. Rebecca! That is so fucking sad. Consumed. Uh... <sighs> Let me get your opinion, Rebecca. Um, no, I, thank you. I'm, I'm not hungry. 